Hey guys, Kit here from MC and welcome back to our final episode of Paint the Boy. Today we're going to be going... Actually, hold on. I'm going to kind of stick this view. One, one second. One second. Oh, so much better. Alright. Before we get started guys, I do just want to say thanks to all of you, uh, both locally and in the webs, who have been really good uh, sending comments and stuff through. It's been really helpful. This does kind of feel like you're shouting into the void a wee bit, so that stuff really has helped. Uh, and also to my fiance for putting up with all this shit in our living room. So now that our boy is highlighted, we're going to go along and do a couple little finishing moves that are really going to help bring our boy to life and make him feel grounded in reality. We're going to start off with doing a bit of work on the plasma gun and then a couple of those little LEDs and screens across his war gear, followed by some transfers and squad markings to make sure he really feels like he's part of an army. And then we're going to seal him and weather him and base him and with all that done, we'll have a beautiful little finished boy. Can't wait, let's do it. Now those of you that have been following along may notice that I've repainted the plasma parts of the gun here just to make sure that they're nice and fresh and white. We were going to do this a different method but I thought the blending would probably be a little bit too complicated for a beginner's guide. And then as per usual we're going to get a wet palette ready and make sure we have some fresh water. I'm also going to make sure we have some toilet paper handy as we're going to do some dry brushing in a little minute. First thing we're going to do for these plasma rifles is just a nice thick coat of Gleeman Blue. The Citadel glazes are basically just really watered down paint so you can actually make any glaze of whichever colour you want. I'm just going for blue uh, and it's handy because they've already made it for us. And we're going to be pretty liberal with this, almost treating it like a wash, just letting it soak into all those little recesses, making sure we get nice and tight into the corners as well. We're going to make sure we don't forget these little vents at the front, and then I'm also going to make sure to get right into that barrel because we want it to be nice and blue, especially around the tip. It might be worth noting that I've gone for the blue plasma here because it kind of matches with the eye lenses and stuff that I'm using, but you can really do this with any colour you want, just make a glaze out of that base, water it down heaps, you should be all good. And then next up we're going to grab some Drakenhof Nightshade. If you're doing a different colour just grab whatever dark wash is the same colour as the colour you're doing. And we're just going to be really careful to just let it soak into the very edge of where the plasma coils meet the gun. And then at the very tips of these vents at the end. And then again on the bottom edge of these little whatever they are at the bottom here. You can kind of tell us a bit of a theme here. We want all of the light to be kind of towards the center of the gun and where that hottest part is going to be. And then from here we're going to go on to dry brushing. Now for this you're going to need a little bit of toilet paper. You want it to be nice and thick. Here I'm folding mine in half. And then I'm going to get the biggest, fattest, kind of chunkiest brush that I have. This is actually a Citadel dry brush which is pretty handy to have if this is something you're going to be doing a bit of. But really just any old busted brush will do this as long as those hairs are nice and soft. And then here I'm going to grab some of our old favourite Ulthuan Grey and we're going to build this up on layers. I'm using Ulthuan Grey because it's kind of bluey white so when we go on top of this with a whiter white it's going to help reinforce that gradient moving from deep blue to white white. I'm going to get a bit on my brush and just work it in using this toilet paper. I want to make sure that there's almost nothing on there when it comes off and then again I'm going to test it on my hand to make sure that it's not coming off strong. There is nothing worse than thinking you've got bugger all on your brush and then putting it on the boy and just wrecking and smudging all over it. So do make sure you test it on your hand first. You can see there there's a little bit too much so I've just gone a little bit more off till it's nice and light. And you'll notice we're going against the grain of the coil so that it catches all those raised edges. We're just going to go both directions maybe a little bit down the side but mostly we are wanting to focus on those very top ridges. And then once we're done with the Auth1 Grey, I'm going to grab a bit of white scar and do the same thing. Again, making sure that there's hardly anything on my brush and testing it to make sure you, 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 don't, want, you don't want to dunk this up. It, it'll be bad. So just, just, do, just do test it. And then for the white scar, we're being even more selective, just doing a little bit less than we were before, really just brushing across the very tops of these coils. And with our dry brushing done, I'm just going to get a bit more of that white scar on my palette test my brush to make sure that it's a nice and sharp point and then over the very very tops of those coils I'm going to paint really carefully some nice lines. Again you can see I'm using the flat of my brush as we did when we're highlighting to make sure that we're not going over any bits that we don't want to and we're being especially careful not to get any paint into those recesses as that's going to absolutely ruin the illusion that we're trying to create. And then I'm going to water down some of this white scar, like really really water it down. You can see how thin it is there. And just put a little dab in the corner of these vents closest to the coils. 
Again, we're focusing to the center to make sure that heat feels like it's coming from the coils rather than the other way around. And then making sure that there's nothing on my brush, I'm just gonna spread that paint out a wee bit inside those vents so that we have a nice smooth gradient going from white to that deep, deep blue. And then for the additional little heat sinks down the bottom here, again, I'm gonna make sure my paint's really, really, really thin and I'm gonna do a little bit of gradient just on the very top so that again, we're emphasizing that feeling of the heat coming from the center. And then using that same kind of cleanup method we did with the vents, I'm gonna use my dry brush to just pull some of that white away so that it's fading nicely from that white to that blue. And then I'm gonna put a little dab of white on the top of each one of these three little heat sinks as well. This time not on the recesses, but on the actual panels themselves. Now don't expect to get this right straight away, especially that thing with pulling the paint around with a dry brush. It can take a little bit of practice, but as usual, practice makes perfect, so the more you do it, the better you're gonna get. Alright, so with our plasma done, we're going to move on to some of these little LEDs and screens around the boy. You can see we've got a wee screen on his sensor spine here, next to that lens. A wee red dot on his helmet. You can see we've got another screen and an LED on his backpack here, as well as another screen and a couple of little LEDs on the back part of that sensor spine as well. So I think starting off with the red, I'm just going to grab some of my Evil Sun Scarlet and just fill in the entirety of that little red dot on his helmet. Being really careful not to scratch that eye lens that we spent so much time doing last episode. And I'm coming at it from a couple of different angles just to make sure we can get a really good coverage. And then this time with paint that's a little bit more thinned down, I'm gonna go for the little LED on the top of the sensor spine. Just letting that really thin down paint kind of suck its way into that little recess. I'm gonna mix some of that Evil Sun Scarlet into some white. Again, we want it to be closer to white than we do to pink. And I'm just gonna put a little dab onto that laser sight. We basically want it so that we can barely see any red, so it's mostly white. And then watering it down a bit more, I'm gonna do the same thing on the back part of that sensor spine. And because this paint's kind of thinned down, we just wanna aim for the very center of that recess. That way it'll sort of flood out and fill the rest of those spaces for us. Now I'm just gonna get some pure white scar and go over those pieces one more time. Just taking my time, making sure my elbows are on the table so I've got a nice solid grip and I'm not being shaky and putting a little pop in the center of that light. Now we're going to move on to the blues and we're going to do the exact same process but this time we're going to switch our Evil Sun Scarlet out for a bit of Lothurn Blue which is a nice light blue with a lot of saturation and a lot of pigment and then I'm going to paint the whole of this little light on top of the screen and then the same thing that we did before next to the red one, just filling that whole recess with nice blue. And if any gets on the edge, we're just gonna wipe it away. From there, we're gonna go straight on for some white scar. And on that back little light, just work our way from the edges towards the center. We want that middle part to be the most brilliant white. And then the same thing again to the center of the LED on the back of the spine. And then I think on the back here it can be a little bit stronger so I'm going to go over one more time just with some thin down white to really make it pop. And because we're doing pure white here I might even do a little bit more on that red as well. And then we're going to move on to these screens and using our old bank Caliban green I'm just going to coat the entire piece. Both the pieces on the sensor spine and then this wee screen on the back of this plasma charger. And then we're just going to rock on to a bit of Lauren Forest. And again, it's kind of like the same thing we did with the lenses in the last episode. We're going to make the top right of that screen the darkest, and then we're going to make our way to the bottom here, being the lightest green. And we're going to do that in a couple of different layers. The next one is going to be Moot Green. Now this can be a little bright, so I've muddied it down with a bit of that Lauren Forest just to soften that transition. And if it's looking a little strong, you can always just give it a little bit of a smudge as well. And one more layer. This time I've added a bit of white to the Moot Green to make it really, really soft. And I'm just going to do in the very bottom left corner. Now this tiny little screen on the back doesn't really have corners, so I'm just aiming for the center. And then using that same color, I'm just gonna stab at the screen a little bit so that it looks like there's some text or symbols or whatever crossing over the screen, just giving a bit of a, a feed out of information. You can see here on the back, it's kind of the gaps between the stabs that kind of link them together to make it seem like the individual letters. So don't try and make one big long line. You want a line that's kind of made up of these little dots. And then when you look at it all together, it's gonna look a lot more like text than if you've just done 
straight lines across the screen. And then I'm gonna go over those little text lines we made with some pure white scar. Again, with that same little stabbing flicking motion. And I'm also gonna put a little bit of white scar in the top right corner of these pieces as well. Top white corner where the darkest green is, right where the sun would be hitting that corner. Now it's probably worth noting on these boys, I'm imagining the sun coming from this kind of direction. So though it may be the top right on the front of the boy, it's gonna be the top left on the back. And there he is, all those little screens and lights and stuff are done. It kind of does help to give a bit of narrative to these boys. You can imagine their, their squad brothers or whatever can like look and see what they're seeing and give little info readouts or yell out at him if his plasma is about to overheat and blow his freaking hands off. So with that done, we're gonna move on to our decals. This is kind of a, um, a love it or hate it thing. I feel like a lot of people think the process for this is really difficult and it can be a little bit frustrating. I think especially if your boys are mostly one color like mine, it does go a long way to adding some more areas of interest. Um, and also in that kind of world building element, it does make them feel a lot more like they're part of a, a larger sort of cohesive force that has its own organization and way of doing things. But before we get into any of that, we are gonna have to talk a little bit about varnishes. There are two types, uh, matte and gloss. For GW, that is Storm Shield, that's the less glossy one, and uh, Ard Coat, which is the shiny, shiny boy. So the way these work is actually kind of fascinating and to do with how light bounces off different surfaces. Ard Coat basically just makes a really smooth finish so that when the light hits it, it bounces straight back off. Whereas Storm Shield is a little bit more of a bumpy, rough texture, not that you'd ever feel it with your hands, but it does mean that when the light hits it, it kind of bounces off at random angles, uh, making it a lot less shiny. This is especially good information to know when we're talking about decals or wet transfers, as what they really, really like to get a really solid stick is a super flat surface. So the first thing we're gonna do before we even think about applying those transfers is figure out what's gonna go where and and then give them a thin coat of some of this glossy varnish. So when it comes to applying the yard coat, we are gonna give it a really good shake up just to make sure that it's nice and mixed and then thin it down with a little bit of water and just coat that entire surface. We don't just wanna do the bit where the decal's gonna go because then we'll get differences in texture and it'll look a bit weird when it's all finished. We wanna do that entire panel because we will go back over it with a matte varnish a bit later. Now when it comes to cutting these guys out, if it's straight and flat, you can just cut it out, no worries. But because we're putting this one on a shoulder pad, which is a curved surface, I'm gonna make a little incision on the top there so that when it presses down, it can fold over itself a wee bit. That way it's gonna be nice and smooth. And that way we're not gonna have any bumps or folds or bits that have raised off or air pockets stuck underneath it. So once we've cut out a transfer, we're gonna lay it down on that bit of bog roll and just soak it with a bunch of water, just absolutely drench it. And then I'm also gonna paint the panel that it's gonna get attached to just with a heap of water as well. The great thing about these transfers is as long as that they and the area that they're going on are wet, you can basically maneuver it around as much as you want. Now this part can be a little bit finicky, so what I'm gonna do is just put the paper up against the panel and use that wet brush to just really gently kind of poke it and prod it and shift it off until it gets onto that shoulder pad. This can be a little bit frustrating, but again, as long as it's wet, you have all the time in the world, so just be patient just finagle and maneuver and get it in there any way you can. And then just trying to get it as central on that shoulder pad as we possibly can. And then once we've got it in the right space, I'm just gonna use a bit of toilet paper and then rolling it over the top of the decal to make sure there's no little air pockets underneath it. But while I'm doing this, I'm gonna be super, super careful to make sure I'm holding it by the paint handle. There is nothing worse than putting another decal on and then turning the boy around to notice that you had your thumb on the other one and you've just ripped the whole thing to shreds. It's, it's, it's the fucking, it's the worst, man. It's the worst, so be careful. Now that they're all gone, I'm gonna go ahead and cover them all with a bit of my technical storm shield, just to make sure that they're all nicely sealed in place and they're not gonna get scratched or bumped off or chipped away later on. However, it is worth noting that you can always put a decal on top of another decal. For example, my boys are of the third company of the Sons of Demeter, so I'm gonna go over that chevron with a gloss varnish rather than a matte varnish, because that way I can put another little number three on top of it, and then we'll go over that with another matte one to remove the shine. Now we could just stop there, but again, my boys are pretty dirty and busted and well used, so we're gonna work in a bit of battle damage. So I guess the easiest way to think of this is going back to that process we did of shading and highlighting the boy, because we're gonna use exactly the same colors and exactly the same washes, starting off with a bit of Agrax, just where the trim meets this decal to work it in so it looks like it's a part of that shadow. 
And then I'm going to go back to our base colour and just put some little knocks and dents and bits of damage into the white so it's not quite so strong. And from there we're going on to our first highlight colour which for us was Flame 1 Flesh. And we're just going to highlight any of those little bits of battle damage just with little dots and swipes along. Don't worry if they're a little bit messy because we can tidy these up a little bit later on. And then we're going to pop out our second highlight colour, Orthon Grey. This is actually going to have a dual purpose here because it's also a slightly darker shade of the white that's already on there so we can fill in some of the white pieces as well to look like they're not so crisp and clean and there's a little bit of tonal variation in them. So you can see here we're both highlighting some of those little pock marks and bullet holes but at the same time we're also painting over some of those white sections just to give them a little bit more texture and some more tonality. And then from there we're going on to our third and final little pinpoint highlight colour which is White Scar. Again a bit of a dual purpose here as well as putting some little pinpoint highlights on those bullet holes and scratches and stuff. We can also use this to sharpen up some of the edges on the decal as well. And with the decals on, you can see that it's added a little bit more visual interest to those armor panels and also reinforcing both that he's been around the block for a little while and that he's part of a, a larger cohesive force that has their own way of identifying each other while they're on the battlefield. That done, we're going to get those varnishes out again and we're going to seal the boy. And we're doing this for a couple of different reasons. Firstly, it's going to protect all those armor panels that we've spent so long painting so that as the boy gets thrown around and busted up and taken from case to case, it's not chipping off and revealing that great plastic underneath. But more importantly, it's going to give different parts of the model different textures and finishes and change the way that it reacts with the light. First up, I'm going to get that real glossy shiny varnish, the GW Art Coat and thin it down and just put a little coat on those lenses and screens and eyepieces just to make them super reflective and reinforce those ideas that we painted on earlier. Now you do want to treat these just like paints and thin them down with a little bit of water. For Storm Shield you want it to look semi-opaque on the palette and for Art Coat you just want it to be running off the brush nice and smooth. Then I'm also going to go over these hoses as well. I want them to feel sort of like industrial coated rubber. Um, this is obviously a pretty important part of the gun and it's not going to function without these these hoses and cables working so they are going to be protected from punctures or other damage. So although Storm Shield is a matte varnish it's actually got a little bit of shine to it and it is just going to separate those armor panels out from any leather or metallic pieces it's just going to give them a little bit of a different property in how they react with light and make it feel distinct and harder and just kind of tougher. Now generally you do want to use a pretty garbage brush to do this but I do want to be pretty detailed and make sure we're not getting any of those metallic pieces or black pieces or god forbid some of those plasma coils. So I am going to use a sharper brush but just make sure to give it a really really solid clean afterwards so that none of that varnish is drying on there and messing up those bristles. And you can see here when it's all done it does really help give those different panels and parts of the model different material properties with how they react with the light and defines everything really nicely. And with that done, no pretty pictures this time because they look pretty much the same. Uh, we're going to move on to basing. So I have kind of a thing for basing. Um, I think a lot of people just do it as like an afterthought just to kind of get it done or have something on there. Um, but it can actually be really powerful in grounding your boys in like a certain environment or giving them a certain feel. To be just desert stuff. Um, so I think it is worth kind of spending a little bit of time on it just to make sure that it is looking pretty spick because I think it does go a long way to making your boy look really finished and grounded and just tasty. Now because I'm using one of those texture paints that kind of shrinks and cracks as it dries the first thing I want to do is paint the entire base a really dark contrasty color but I also want something that's going to be a bit earthy so for me that's Baylor Brown. It's nice and dark so it's going to contrast well when it cracks but it's also earthy so it's going to feel like it's natural and, and part of the scenery. Pro tip, this is also how you do a lava base. Put orange and yellow all over the base and then put a crackle thing on top and it'll just split and look freaking schmick. Monty likes the wee lava base, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Yeah, okay. And then once that's dry, we're gonna start adding the crackle stuff. Now, unfortunately, I did lose the footage for this. Sorry, dudes. Um, so I'm doing this on a inter... Jesus Christ. On an infill inter... Infer... In cursor, 
scat boy. Now as a general rule of thumb for this stuff, the more you put on, the bigger and more profound the cracks are gonna be, but also the less stickability I guess it has. It's more likely to kind of flake off and chip, but that is kind of the look that I'm going for. So once I put heaps of Agrolan over everything, um, including these rocks at the back here, we're gonna add some more to that later on and it's gonna give some nice verticality to the base. And then we're just gonna let it sit and dry overnight. And then in the morning to help keep those flakes nice and solid on the base we're going to go over with a layer of that matte varnish. It's just one more layer that's going to help keep all those cracks down uh, and stop them chipping and wearing away over time. Now this Agriline Earth isn't quite the colour that I want it to be so I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of Baylor Brown and really water it, like water the shit out of it to the point where it's really just a stain and just really liberally apply it to kind of change the colour a bit so it's more of a yellowy kind of dustier brown. This is actually a pretty handy thing to do if you're not quite happy with the colour that comes out of the pot. You're not stuck with it. You can go ahead and paint over this stuff or stain it or colour it in any way you see fit. And you can see I'm also painting a little bit up the bottom of his boots here as well. Just a game to kind of stain it and get some of that colour from the base running up the model. Which is going to go a long way to helping ground him in the reality of that desert. And then once that's all dried off, which could take a while because it's pretty watery, I'm going to go over one more time with a bit of Agrax Earthshade. This is why I love doing bases, you can be rough as guts with it, just slap the shit everywhere and it'll end up looking really really good. And then once it's all dried up and done, I'm going to go ahead and give everything a bit of a dry brush. So for dry brushing, I am going to use um, one of these GW dry brush paints, um, but really you can do this with absolutely any paint at all. Uh, it's the same process, you're just going to make sure that you have as little as possible on your brush before you start putting it on the boy. So I'm going to test it on my hand to make sure there's not too much on it, and then I'm just going to brush over the entirety of the base, and then start working on his feet. Because these are closest to the earth, it's obviously where the most of that dust and dirt and sand and grime is going to collect. And the same thing goes with the sponge which we're going to do now. So for this I'm just going to grab a bit of uh, pluck foam from, I think it's from a, a battle case or a camera case, I can't really remember, but this stuff here, if you don't have any just use a fucking sponge from your bathroom, it's all good. The main thing you want to do is make sure that you rip it so that it's an uneven surface, just really get in there and mangle that boy up. You don't want to see the same pattern repeated across the boy, we want to make sure that it's a little bit different every time. So once I've got some of that brown on my palette I'm just going to dab my sponge into it a bunch to get it all up in those grooves and those little holes and then get most of it off onto a bit of toilet paper and then we're just going to be really careful and really subtle and just dab a couple little bits across the boy I don't even know if you can see that on the camera it's so slight but it will make a nice kind of texture effect at the end of the day again we don't want to screw this up at the finish line less is more do it slowly do it carefully don't, don't, don't fuck it up now. Just don't fuck it up now. And then we're gonna get out our Terminator stone again and do another dry brush, this time across the whole boy. The, the, the whole, the whole ding dang dude. Apart from the plasma, that shit is like crazy hot. Those coils will be insane. It would vaporize anything that touches it, including particles of sand. It would just turn them to glass, which would then melt away into glass vapor and disappear. So we're gonna make sure that we avoid that. Now again, we're being super careful to make sure there isn't too much in our brush. And I'm just going to paint over the metal parts, the glass parts, the lenses, the screens, the casing for the gun, the tubes, everything. But to be honest, as I'm doing it, I can barely even notice it having an effect. The idea here is that it's just going to change the way the light bounces off those panels. Some bits are going to be muted, some bits are going to be brighter. Those glossy cables are going to have bits that aren't quite glossy. It's just going to give a lot of texture to some of these little details that we've already added. And again, help ground him in real life and reality and make him feel like he's really a part of that desert. And there he is, our finished boy. Uh, well he's not a boy now, he's a man. He's a he's a wee man. He's he's our wee man. Um, cue music, cue pretty shots. Let's uh, let's do this thing. So that's it, we're, we're finished. Thanks for, for joining me, it's been a total pleasure um, and it's kept me real sane during this pretty crazy time. I'm gonna be doing some quick tips and stuff uh, later on down the road as work gets busier. I'm really excited about the battle reports that we're gonna be doing coming up. Um, I'm, I'm a cinematographer and a DP by trade so I'm quite excited about 
doing this kind of thing and making them look really pretty and cinematic, which um, so far I think is lacking a little bit around town. Uh, so yeah, it's all good stuff. And it's all real cool and it's all coming soon. And I hope everyone's okay and thanks for joining us. And that's it. I've run out of ends. I'm, I'm, I'm out. I'm good. We're done. Bye. Bye. Bye.